from above the world of cars. Disney planes. Not long ago, there was an ordinary plane who had an extraordinary dream. Dusty Crop Hopper wanted to fly in the wings around the globe rally. For a crop dusting plane from a small town, Dusty had set his sights very high. Fly straight, turn around, fly straight, turn around. Dusty's best friend, Chug, helped him with his training as much as a truck could help a plane with flying workouts. Chug was one of the few who thought Dusty actually had a chance to make it into the big race. Oh yeah! Uh-huh! Others thought Dusty was just plain crazy. Dottie was the mechanic in Dusty's little hometown of Propwash Junction. She made it very clear to her friend Dusty that he was not built to race. Dusty, you're not built to race. You're built to dust crops. Do you know what will happen if you push it too far? Wing flutter, metal fatigue, turbine failure. One afternoon, while watching a TV special about the 10 best racing crashes of all time, Dusty and Chug felt a spark of fear. Dusty needed some better coaching from someone who actually knew how to fly. <laughs> Not good. Oh! They asked the skipper, an old warplane who had been one of the best flight trainers ever, and a war hero, too. He took one look at the crop duster and refused, no questions asked. Uh, you're not a truck, so I was wondering if you would train me? Go home. You're in over your head, kid. Dusty continued his training and made it to the qualifying races. He raced his heart out with the best planes, including the world champion, Rip Slinger. When all was said and done, Dusty Crophopper had made it into the wings around the globe rally. Rip Slinger.
Dusty would never survive in the big leagues without help, and the skipper knew it. So he finally came out of his hangar and offered to train the young crop duster to race. You're going up against the best racers in the world, and some of them don't even finish. Hmm. But Dusty was holding something back. So Skipper told him about his squadron's motto, Volo Pro Veritas, I Fly for Truth. Dusty confessed that he was afraid of heights. The Skipper knew Dusty had to fix this. In the meantime, he kept Dusty sprinting against the shadows of high-flying planes. Finally, Dusty was ready. He flew to New York to begin the race. The small town plane eagerly introduced himself to Bulldog, the British racer. But Bulldog just saw Dusty as another plane to beat and shoot him away. Wow! Bulldog? From the European Cup? The Big Dog! Bulldog. Wow! Ripslinger. Bulldog? From the European Cup? The Big Dog! Dusty also saw Ripslinger, the number one racer in the world, and El Chupacabra, the multi-talented superstar from Mexico. You have done many of these long-distance rallies, yes? Nope, this is my first one. It is my first time as well. We will have many adventures, you and I. In the first leg of the race, Dusty had a tough time. He just wasn't ready to fly high yet, so he chose to fly below the clouds through an icy storm. Dusty finally arrived at a rest point in Iceland, freezing cold and far behind the other racers. He radioed home to hear his friends and get some advice from the skipper. Great. Dusty got right back in the race in the next leg. Nearing the finish line, he spotted Bulldog blinded by an oil spill over his windshield. Dusty helped him land, which made him a hero to Bulldog and the racing fans, but it also put Dusty in last place. Bulldog, apply your left aileron! Stop roll! Now quick, pull up! Harder! Harder! Slight roll right! Good! <laughs> In Germany, Dusty met a vehicle with two personalities, a car named Franz, who changed into a plane named Fliegenhosen. The aero car advised Dusty to get rid of his crop sprayer. Dusty apprehensively agreed, and soon he was soaring faster, with El Chupacabra cheering him on. Dusty started placing better in the races. He kept flying low and he began to get more and more attention. He even got the attention of Ripslinger, who was not happy when reporters ignored him to interview Dusty instead. Truth be told, Ripslinger was angry that Dusty was gaining in the standings. 
my coach, Skipper. He's the reason I'm even here. He's an amazing instructor and a great friend. When Dusty talked to reporters, he always gave his coach, Skipper, a lot of credit for guiding him. At every stop, Dusty could hardly wait to radio home. At one of those stops, Dusty also talked with Indian racer Ishani. On a romantic tour over India, she gave him a tip. He could fly low through the Himalayan mountains if he followed the train tracks. That tip turned into a nightmare for Dusty. He got stuck in a blizzard with only two ways out, fly over the mountain or into a train tunnel that passed through it. Dusty chose to fly through the tunnel. <gasps> When Dusty finally landed, he wasn't sure where he was. He soon realized that not only was he in the right place, but he was also in first place. Uh, hello? Afterwards, Dusty headed toward Ashani. He had spotted her new propeller, a gift from Ripslinger. Ashani had betrayed Dusty to try to help Ripslinger stay in the lead. Dusty kept doing better and better in the races. He was becoming famous, too, with fans around the world. Still, at the end of every race, he checked in with the skipper by radio. We head out across the Pacific tomorrow, Skip. I'm proud of you, Dusty. We head out across the Pacific tomorrow, Skip. One evening, Dusty saw his friend El Chupacabra trying to win the heart of Rochelle. But El Chu was too loud and flashy. Dusty helped him tone it down. It worked. Unfortunately, Ripslinger wanted to win the rally, and Dusty was in his way. Shortly after takeoff over the Pacific, Ripslinger's thug zoomed in behind Dusty and knocked off his navigation antenna. Soon, Dusty was lost and low on fuel, flying over the middle of the ocean. Two jets, Bravo and Echo, rescued him. They guided him back to their aircraft carrier, the home of the skipper's old squadron, the Jolly Wrenches.
It took all the courage Dusty had to land on the little runway of that aircraft carrier. But he did it. The entire crew cheered him on. The crew fixed and fueled up Dusty, and Dusty saw the wall of fame for the Jolly Wrenches. He was disappointed and confused to see that the skipper had flown just one mission. Hey, what is that? With a heavy storm brewing, Dusty had to get to Mexico for the next race. The skipper, Bravo, and Echo all told him to fly over the storm. But Dusty still didn't have the courage to do it. He battled the weather and lost. <gasps> I gotta get above the storm. <coughs> Luckily, a rescue squad arrived just in time. The team saved Dusty and took the battered plane to Mexico, where his friends from home were waiting. Dusty wanted to talk only to the skipper. He needed the truth. So the skipper told him he had only gone on one mission, lost his entire crew, and never flown again. Let's go in for a closer look, but keep your distance. It was too late to pull up. Dottie couldn't fix Dusty. She also couldn't fix Dusty's broken spirit. She could only tell her friend how much the skipper believed in him, and that now even she believed Dusty was a true racer. Still, Dusty was too battered to race, until his fellow racers appeared and donated parts to help him get back in the air again. They wanted him to finish the Wings Around the Globe rally. The next day, Dusty started the last leg of the race and flew well until Ripslinger and his thugs tried to knock him out. That's when the skipper appeared. It was his first time flying in over 60 years. He was flying for Dusty. Dusty knew it took a lot of courage for the skipper to help him out, and it spurred him on. Dusty flew higher than ever before. He caught the tailwinds and soared. And that day, Dusty Crophopper from Propwash Junction did what no crop duster had ever done before. He won the Wings Around the Globe rally. Dusty had flown alone, but he knew he had a lot of good friends to back him up, including a new lifelong friend, the Skipper.